we have a few minutes. Show me that report. Despite some damage from fire and impact forces, technicians have been able to recover the recorded data. We knew we didn't have FDR. We were glad to hear, though, that the CVR uh, did work and that the accident flight had been captured. All right, I think we waited long enough. Let's hear it. Victor Mike Charlie, reduce your speed to 180 knots. Reducing speed to 180, Mike Charlie. Because it's a small aircraft, we could hear not just all the sounds that were in the, in the cockpit, but we could also hear the, the sounds in the cabin. We must be getting close. As they listen to the moments just before the crash, they hear nothing out of the ordinary. The no, leave it. Leave it for now. One of the things that it did reassure us is that there was not an intentional act that brought down the aircraft. There was no sounds similar to a struggle. There was no sounds of an explosive device. And so that helped close the, the book on, on that aspect of the investigation. The mystery of what did cause the crash persists. Look down. Investigators listen as the pilots descend toward the runway. Look. Hmm. They're all lined up in front of us. All seems well until. Turbulence from that thing. Oh, man. One of the interesting things that we did hear was that the flight crew did mention uh, turbulence. What the hell? Uh, I don't know. All right, sounds like that's where the trouble starts. Where are we at? 14 seconds before hitting the ground. It seems the Learjet hit a patch of violently unstable air. Oh, my god. All of a sudden, boom, they're upside down, plummeting towards the ground. Calvaro! What do we do? Calvaro! Without the flight data, the voice recording leaves investigators with only a partial picture. We don't know exactly what each of these pilots was thinking at the time. We don't know what control inputs were being made, but it shows that there was that confusion factor in the cockpit of what to do, how to recover the aircraft from the upset. They don't seem to know what hit them. Alvaro, what do we do, Alvaro? Give it to me. Give it to me. You know, hearing that sound and, you know, putting myself in the, their place and knowing what that outcome is going to be, it's got to be horrible. It's yours, Alvaro. They tried to pull out. It wasn't enough. They had so little time. They had so little altitude. We had a normal flight coming in, and then we had a loss of control relatively quick. Uh, there was no evidence of any mechanical failure. So what do you think? Wake turbulence? So we had to really look at the possibility of a wake turbulence event. Wake turbulence forms when the low pressure air above the wing draws high pressure air upward, creating a swirling vortex that trails behind the aircraft as it flies. As a plane flies along, each of its wingtips is generating a tiny horizontal tornado called a wingtip vortex. The powerful vortices can linger in the air for minutes at a time, creating an invisible hazard for other aircraft. When a smaller plane flies into these rotating columns of air at low altitude, they can spin out of control and crash into the ground within seconds. 